the model view view model design pattern. Hello, my name is Daniel Peck and in this presentation we will talk about the model view view model design pattern or as many people call it MVVM. I will assume that we all know what a design pattern is by now. Therefore, I will skip the introduction part in this presentation. But if you don't know what it is, you can revisit my colleagues' presentations from before and find out. We will start by presenting what this architectural pattern represents, why it was created, along with a short history about it, its structure, and a few pros and cons. Let's get into it. What is MVVM? MVVM is a software architectural pattern or design pattern which creates a clean separation between the development of the user interface or the view from the development of backend logic and the view model. This makes it a lot easier for the graphical design and logic construction teams to work independently, which all of us know is a key factor when it comes to large project size. The pattern was first announced in 2005. It was invented by Microsoft architects Ken Cooper and Ted Peters. The pattern was in incorporated into Microsoft's .NET graphics system, VPF which stands for Windows Presentation Foundation and its derivative for Internet Application Circulite. Now, why was MVVM created? It was created to simplify event-driven programming of user interfaces by loosely coupling the user interface and the backend logic. If you don't know what event-driven programming is, it's a term used in gra graphical user interface applications and basically means mm -hmm. that the flow of the program is determined by events such as mouse clicks, key presses or messages from the other programs or threads. There are three parts that create a structure of the MVVM pattern. The first one is the model, the second one is the view and last but not least the view model. Now let's discuss about each one of them separately. First we'll take a look at the model or the information layer, which basically represents the actual data or information that the project interacts with. It is important to note that the model should only hold the information and not manipulate it. Therefore, the business logic is kept separate from the model itself. Let's take a small example. If we think about a contact in our phone, we know that it has a name, a phone number and an address and so on. And in this case, the contact will be part of the model. In a contact application, the contact will only be acted on and it will not be able to act on itself. The handling of data is done in the business logic or the backend logic. The next item is the view or the visual layer, which is exactly what it sounds like. It represents the actual user interface that the end user sees and interacts with and its purpose is to make the data look more presentable. What happens in the view actually? The view manages the inputs and actions that a user brings, for example, key presses or mouse events, which will in the end manipulate the data from the model. Also, it contains events, behaviors and data bindings that require knowledge of the view model. And now let's talk about the view model or the logical layer of the view. The view model constitutes the bridge between the model and the view and has a purpose of keeping the elements specific to the view separate from the model. It interacts with input from the view and handles it so that it can be translated onto the model or it can also interact with a service to retrieve the model and translate it back to the view so it can be more re readable to the end user. Now let's recap a bit what the design structure of the MVPM is. First we have the model which holds the domain specific data. Then we have the view, which is the actual user interface that also might have some UI logic in the code behind. And last but not least, we have the view model that is responsible for the presentation logic. The view model being the bridge between the view and the model. It interacts with the view through data bindings and commands. Also with services that retrieve the needed model and it can pass it through the view with the help of notifications. Now let's take into consideration some pros and cons. The nice things about MVVM are that the view is loosely coupled to the presentation logic. 
and that it allows designers to avoid all the tangled code that might be otherwise stuck in the code behind. Also, the view model is easier to unit test rather than having to test the code behind behaviors. And so you don't need to worry about any event-driven code. And the testing of the view model can be done without any uninteresting UI automation or user interaction. Some cons of using MVPM would be that if you want to build a simple UI, you don't need to complicate your life with the data bindings that MVPM brings. Also, it can be difficult to design the view model from start when working on a large project in order to get the right amount of generality. And finally, the data binding is quite hard to debug if you need to do that. Regarding whether or not you should use the MVVM pattern in your project, there is no concrete answer to this question. But this is because the design pattern is intended to solve some general but also particular sets of problems. In a real life example of using MVVM, the pattern solves the problem of the view being tightly coupled to the model and the liberty it gives to the development and design teams of doing so. Our unprofessional opinion is that you should use MVVM if you are planning to split the workload or if you need to unit test your application afterwards. Thank you for listening to our presentation of the model view view model design pattern. Now I would like to pass the mic to my colleagues who will give you some code examples of MVVM. Thanks for the mic, uh, Daniel. Hello, my name is uh, Parfenia Christian and I would like to present you a very simple example of uh, MVVN uh, pattern. We will start by looking into the model. Here we have a simple class named person who has name, age, occupation and gender, the constructor and two string uh, methods. And we also have uh, an enumerable who is used uh, for the gender. Here we have a provider that is a class who has a static method who creates a list of different persons. This is what we will use as a service. Here we have the view and the view model. I will show you the view model first. Before we look into the view, we should have a better understanding of how view model looks like. Our view model is called main window view model, as you can see. It implements the interface iNotify property change, which is very important because by doing, we will be able to notify the view whenever there has been a change that should also be updated on the user interface. We have created the class delegate command, which implements the I command interface and will be used by the view for a button after we bind the populate list command property for the view model to the view. The command is set in the constructor of the view model and it takes as parameter the method populate list, which then sets the property person list with a new list of persons from the person provider. We have all these uh, properties here that have the setter the on property changed method. This will be notified the view that the property changed and that it should be updated on the UI as usual. Now, if we look into the constructor of the view, we will see that we have an initialized component and the data context with the main window view model. Now we can look into the view and we can see that it has multiple UI components, labels, list box, button, and so on. But the most important part here are the binders. As you can see, the name of each property binding is the same as one of the properties from the view model. What WPF will do behind the scenes is that it will create a dependency property with the same name as property name that was bind for each property. And this was our simple code example of an implementation of the MVVM design pattern. Now my colleague Marcel will present you a more complex example from an open source project. Hello, my name is Marcel, Narica Marcel, and I have the pleasure to present you a contact book application. This application was created using someone in forms with MVVM architecture. As you can see, we have the list with the contacts, we can add a new one. We can edit one. Delete.
delete one and even to call Someone informs is a cross-platform framework which help us to create iOS, Android and even Windows phone applications with .NET. Basically, a single code base, user interface and business logic can be used by multiple platforms. Now, I will present the components in the MVVM pattern for this application, the model, the view and the view model. Let's see the magic. I open this open source project in Visual Studio and I will show you to understand the roles of each component. It's also important to understand how they interact with each other. For example, view with view model, view model with model, and the fact that view model is an intermediary between the view and the model. Our application is a summary form application, and this part is the common part. The second part is for Android, and the last one is for iOS. In the common part, we will find almost everything from uh, user interface components to business logic to layouts, uh, maybe persistence, maybe unit test, models, assets, everything, almost everything. Let's take a look over the contract class. Contract class is the model class and here we will find the, um, basically all necessary underlying data. Uh, details of context, for example, ID, first name, last name, Samarin. Every view is a page and every page has two components. For example, the contact detail page has the UI, the user interface part and the user interface logic, which is code behind. In uh, code behind, we will create the link between the view and the view model via binding context. And we will use this uh, binding context in the user interface part where we will uh, link every object from the screen with every pr appropriate property from the view model. Also here, this code we will run in two platforms, Android and iOS. Nice. Another very important thing is in uh, code behind, we is not recommended to um, uh, have uh, business logic. And now let's take a look over the view model. Contract view model. By creating a view model for contract, we provide all the necessary details need to access each contract class. For example, here we will link every uh, property from the view model with every field from the model. And additionally, if we want to add something new, and add a few properties just for view, for example, like here, the full name and, pro uh, and profile image, we can add. Another interesting thing is the fact that if we extending the base view model class, um, I notify property change is implemented for all the contracts. And when the um, when the value will be edited and changed, then the view model will be notified of the changes. Another great thing for us is the fact that iNotify property change also supports observer pattern. And now let's take a look over the communication between the view and the view model via commands. The view model can have commands which uh, are methods that are executed in a reaction to a specific activity in the view like a button click when we want to add or edit or call or something like this oh now let's go to the to allow a data binding between a button and the view model the button defines two properties command and command parameter and now we have two cases here for example we don't need to send a parameter for save but here in order to delete um, a contact, we need to send from uh, the view to the view model a parameter for the delete contact command. And after we will trigger the delete command uh, contact command, we will call the um, we will call the um, this method and uh, which will lead us to the expected result. 
a next step in this application will be to um, will be to test uh, the business logic and uh, thanks to this architecture we can effortless create unit test for uh, the view model and for the model without using the view and uh, for the view model we will have the exam exactly the same functionality as used by the view in conclusion MVVM cleanly separate the business and the presentation logic of this application from the user interface part create uh, to the developers great code reuse opportunities and the application become easier to test and maintain this was the MVVM magic now let's take a look over the source of this project thank you Hopefully you enjoyed our examples and our presentation. Now we have some references that we want to show and we would like to thank you for listening to the presentation. Now I would like to... No, no, not just a redo. Oh, it's time. Yeah, and the testing of the view model can also be done by... Oh. Our unprofessional opinion is that you should use MVPM in... Ah. As you can see... Uh... Uh... Ah, come on, tell me no, so that